Good morning to the members of the public, to the members of the committee and officers. Welcome to the development management meeting. I'd like to set out the protocol for the meeting procedures. The planning officer will make a short introduction to the application. If there are speakers, they will be heard before the main part of the presentation. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. I stress three minutes. It is important to know that once they're finished, the speakers will not be allowed to speak again. If there are no speakers, there'll be a full presentation. After the presentation, a structured debate will begin. At the end of the debate, I'll ask for a vote on whichever proposition is put forward first, be it in support of the recommendations or against. However, if a deferment is put forward, I'll take the deferment vote first. And I'd like to welcome Council Barbara Nash, who's here this morning as a new member of the committee. Declaration of interest. Councillor Hardy. This is chairman, uh, item three, personal and prejudicial. Thank you. Okay. Confirmation of minutes. Do we all agree it's a true record? Please show. Thank you. Substitute members. Yes, Chairman, we just have one this morning, and that is um, Councillor Mrs. Aids, who's substituting for Councillor Kieran Mulholland. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're dealing with item number two first, which is the bank house. Page 11. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Um, this uh, application um, is a resubmission of an application that was previously, previously considered by this committee on the 20th of March of this year. Um, that application reference was 12 or 617. The site is Bank House, a um, former bank previously used as offices on the junction of Alexandria um, uh, Drive and Road and Cartmel Road. The um, the property itself is a detached property, it's highlighted on the screen there, and just to refresh people's memories, the actual property itself is a red brick detached building, um, looks like it was originally built in purposefully as a bank premises, currently unused, um, and uh, that is that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven speakers, uh, and it's uh, Michael Itoff first, and I believe you've got some photos. Is, is that right? No, I have a slide. You have a slide. Yes, please. Mr Chairman, members of the Development Management Committee, I'm Michael Etoff, I live on Cartmel Road, um, our house faces right down into the proposed funeral parlour. For myself, my family, my neighbours, this proposed development into a funeral parlour is inappropriate and insensitive. It's become a powder keg of emotion for the people who live around our area. Especially this is true in the case of 28 Cartmel Road and 29 Alexandria Drive, which are the two houses which are closest. And when I say closest, I mean really close, almost on top of the proposed funeral parlour. On my slide, I have showed you that policy EMP3 requires 
each of those criteria to be met. And I'd like to draw your attention to criteria number four. It should not prejudice the amenities of adjacent residents. And my contention is that it very much um, fails that criteria. I've been looking around funeral parlours everywhere I've been. And I have yet to find a funeral parlour in existence which has buildings, how, homes, sorry, so close in proximity to the funeral parlour. So that when you look out of your bedroom window or you're in your garden, the funeral parlour is right there almost on top of you. Its location is in the middle of residential housing, too close for these two particular houses and the application should be refused outright. When making your decision, think for a second. How would you feel if it was you? Or your parents? Or your children? Were put in this dilemma. The residents surrounding the development are united to a man, woman and child against this proposal. I feel that concerns expressed about this should have been favourably considered and I was disgusted when the planning officer has once again given his support to this proposal. To allow this building also to be used 24 hours a day is totally unacceptable. Our bedroom looks right across and we don't want to be woken up throughout the early hours of the morning by car headlights, security lights, opening and closing of car doors, the arrival of bodies in the early hours is totally unacceptable. There's been a change of position from Lancashire County Council which we found very interesting. Before Christmas Mr Tay was very much in favour of refusal of this planning application. Then miraculously Mr Tay disappeared from the scene and we now have Rachel Crompton who I don't actually think she's been to look because she doesn't know the street areas around St Anne's uh, but she's changed her point of view and what we what I want to know is what check what Your time's up Mr Eaton you change. About three minutes thirty seconds. Can I just conclude Thank one you. paragraph please? In conclusion I feel it is imperative that the application is refused planning permission. It doesn't meet the criteria as it will destroy the residential amenity of the surrounding homes. It's much too close to them. Please let common sense and common decency prevail. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Laxton, please. I shall keep the gentleman at the end busy because I have three slides. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Richard Laxton, and I'm speaking on behalf <coughs> of Mr. and Mrs. Cunliffe of 28 Cartmel Road, my wife's parents. The town council have reconsidered this revised application and now have two objections based on the use of the rear doors. Namely, the canopy issue has not been suitably addressed and the conditions should be placed on the hours of business to address the residents' concerns over the 24-hour use of the premises. Now, what you can see from the picture is that the latest version of this canopy is now an even bigger structure. It towers eight feet high, well above the current wall. And the view from the bedroom, as you can see in the top there, is not pretty. And from the garden below is not much better. So the current wall is eight, six feet high, and this structure is now eight to nine feet high. The canopy addresses the symptom, not the cause, which is that the doors are in the wrong place. Moving the access doors around the corner of the building solves one issue and reduces the effect of the other. 
Could you change the slide, please? This is an alternative design that you can see the simple change of moving the doors from under that white window to round the corner has removed all the eyesore issues that are a problem there. It significantly reduces the impact on the neighbours. And equally, the, the view at the side shows that the alternative design is much more in keeping with the local area. The developer declined an offer to discuss this suggestion when it was raised, although he did raise the size, the height of the fence up to eight feet, which really was making it things worse. We believe that if you do decide to grant this application, then this alternative design should be incorporated together with a limitation on the time the doors are used. This would greatly mitigate the impact on both sets of neighbours. Could you move to slide three, please? The Cunliffs, who are both in their mid-90s, have lived in harmony with the various uses of Bank House for over 50 years. But there was no rear access and definitely no use at all outside normal office hours. The canopy tries to hide the symptom rather than address the basic cause, which is the current proposed door position. The town council have recognised this and have objected, suggesting restricting conditions should be applied. We hope you will also recognise the significance of these two issues and ensure the cause is addressed using the alternative design and by adding use of these doors to condition eight on your agenda. I have copies here if you wish to look at those desire alternative designs, but thank you very much. Thank you. I'll leave these here. Dr. Mark Rusturic. Mr. Chairman, members of the Management Committee, and also members of the community who have come to support us today, thank you for coming. Bank House, is smartened, when smartened up a bit, is a very suitable building from which to operate a business. However, when you need to put an entrance around the back in a very confined space, a two metre high fence around the side and the back with a green canopy and be able to reverse a car down a narrow passage in order to carry out a business, then I think it would be the conclusion of many people that the building was unsuitable and that a more appropriate building could be found. A similar situation has arisen before. An initial plan app planning application was submitted to a council with a similar method of vehicular access within a residential area. In this case, the plan was not deemed suitable due to the method of access proposed. A more suitable plan was then proposed with the following reasons for change. And I quote, Loss of light and privacy have been overcome by the deletion of a 2.2 metre high fence and door openings to the side passage adjacent to 499 Lytham Road. Also, the plans have been amended to delete vehicular access across the Lytham Road frontage to improve traffic safety and restrict disturbance to the neighbour. End quote. The building in question, of course, is 497 Lytham Road, which is owned by the same applicant and operated as a funeral parlour. So in conclusion, having seen many examples of funeral parlours both in the northwest of England and the Scottish Lowlands, this building is the most unsuitable building we have seen for the purpose intended. As in the accepted revised plan of 497 Lytham Road, most funeral parlours have a discreet, undercover service access into the premises. Very often, as is now the case with the above, this involves reversing into a garage. 
It seems that all along it has been a case of forcing an unsuitable building through the planning process when common sense would suggest that there are many more suitable places which meet the access criteria stated above. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pauline Clark, please. Thank you. Um, Mr Chairman, councillors, local residents keep asking why you and your officers are so determined to grant this application. Why is this case to be permitted, disregarding the clear impact on neighbours and the neighbourhood? We struggle to understand why you apply different policies to applications with similar impacts. Today's agenda also includes an application for sui generis storage of vehicles at Peel Hall Business Park. That officer's report refers particularly to the NPPF, paragraph 123, to protect neighbouring residents from unacceptable noise disturbance. In that case, the nearest homes, including that of a filed councillor, are at least 30 feet from a 9 feet high solid perimeter wall and over 900 feet from the actual site entrance, yet they will be protected by conditions ensuring no activity or vehicle movement on, off or within that site between 8pm and 8am. So why is there no fairness or consistency in filed planning? Why is NPPF Para 123 not deemed relevant for Bank House, with adjacent homes only 5 or 10 feet from a mere wooden fence? Why no similar ban on any out-of-hours activity? Your officer's report for Bank House suggests that residents' objections are emotional and unreasonable, but I ask you to consider whether this building and location are suitable for any purpose however innocuous, which demands nighttime deliverers in order to be viable. The associated noise from engines, vehicle doors, building doors, metal framed gates and clattering stretcher trolleys will disturb sleep for the closest neighbours. In March, this committee noted that people don't die to order. Very true. So every single night of the year will bring the worry, is this to be another broken night? That constant anxiety and the broken nights themselves are surely detrimental to health and well-being. Our neighbours are expected to shut all windows and take sleeping tablets. What about visitors and future residents in the adjacent homes with young families? How could they ensure small children are not disturbed by nighttime deliveries? Please consider carefully NPPF Para 123, which states that planning policies and decisions should aim to avoid noise from giving rise to significant adverse impacts on health and quality of life. Please protect the health and quality of life of our local community by refusing this application. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Sturk, please. Chairman, members of the Management Development Committee, uh, I'm, I'm speaking partly on behalf of Julia Van Wyck, who you know has been heavily involved in uh, bringing together various objections to this planning application. So some of the thoughts here are hers plus some of mine. Uh, I'm Tim Sturk, I live at 27 Carmel Road, fairly close to a bank house. Uh, Julie wanted first me to draw your attention to the fact that in the officer's report there was mention of policies EP7 and EP14 with regards to the sadly neglected urban site. Uh, your officers state the site being sadly neglected over many years. In fact, the case is that the site has deteriorated considerably only during this last year in which the current applicant has owned the property. I think whenever one looks at this, as has been mentioned already, this site is actually totally unfit for the purpose for which it's being uh, claimed to be used. It will have impact on local amenities. 
To all practical purposes, since I've lived there since 1985, it has not been used for any kind of commercial uh, objectives at all. It's been a quiet office which has hardly been, quite honestly, used very little, even for that purpose. There is no doubt that the application will generate an increase in, in local traffic. There will obviously be things of co coffin deliveries, visiting doctors, visiting relatives of the deceased, funeral floral deliveries, contracted clinical waste removal, private ambulances arriving and departing, and funeral cortèges. Some of this is going to have to happen. I know there are restrictions to be put upon movement, but some of, a lot of this is bound to happen actually during the night. I would claim that this area is totally unsuited for this sort of commercial activity. It's actually, it's a lot has been made of the fact that the commercial activity of Alexandria Drive gives a reason why this can be used for commercial activity. In fact, the residential area, to all intents and purposes, goes round the corner from Carmel Road to a totally uh, residential area, goes round the corner to as far as Riley Avenue, and then the commercial activity begins to say that where we are on that corner is actually a commercial premises is totally against the uh, idea that is behind all this. I believe that this application is totally unreasonable and should be rejected. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Little, are you uh, wanting to speak now or uh, after the um, applicant's agent? I'll uh, speak now. Okay, thank you. Have a glass of water because I'm full of cold. Excuse me. Good morning, councillors, officers. As you've heard, many comments from residents, and I am here to represent the thoughts and wishes of the residents who live in and around Bank House. I ex have examined the plans and I know the site well. Some of you might think the area around this application is commercial, as you've just heard, but I would disagree. Some are houses to the left, the right, behind and the front of this building. It is a quiet residential area. True, there is a, carriage, a garage, but that's a block away and only op operates at business hours. I thoroughly believe this category of business is not conducive to the ambience of residential living and part of the government advice and local plan policy, it states, an application which constitutes an unacceptable development which causes damage to the amenity of nearby properties and the surrounding area, and as such, we would represent that the application be refused. Also, our recent response from Lancashire County Council is that they're looking further at the safety and logistics of increased traffic and its visibility for this site, which includes reversing into the sides of the building, which is very tight on both sides. So tight, a livery vehicle cannot open driver or passenger doors, which I think is not conducive to business, especially a business of this nature. I feel although visual appearance and the architecture of the individual buildings are important factors, Securing high quality and inclusive design goes beyond aesthetic considerations. Therefore, planning policies and decisions should address the connection between people and places and integration of development. I therefore ask you to please consider my refusal for this application on behalf of myself and residents. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Butler, please. Chairman, members, good morning. This application differs from that which you considered in March in one respect. The applicant has now provided detailed proposals for the fencing and canopy initiatives you considered beneficial last time. Hollowells is a highly respected, independent, family-run local business of long standing who are creating new employment opportunities and expanding their workforce to the direct benefit of the local area. 
The proposal fulfils the various planning policy requirements. In particular, policy EMP3 provides that business development will be permitted subject to certain criteria being met. Property is suitably related to the highway network, well related to public transport, does not conflict, conflict with other policies in the plan, and is of a scale appropriate to the character, location and setting of the area. Property was originally built and has been used for decades as commercial business premises. The only remaining policy issue is whether the proposal will be prejudicial to the amenities of adjacent residential areas. With regard to traffic and parking, adequate parking space is provided. Traffic generated by the proposal will be far less demonstrative than might be the case from other lawful uses that could, be, that could take place straight away under permitted development rights without the benefit of controlling planning conditions. The Highway Department raised no objection. The proposal does include a number of landscaping measures that make beneficial improvements to the street scene and add positively to local amenity. With regard to noise and disturbance, no external or noisy activities are undertaken. Overlooking has been addressed through the addition of suitable screen fences, gates and a canopy. And in fact, the original proposal was adjusted to take account of Mr Laxton's concerns over height, uh, which he now seeks to uh, uh, object to. Flood lighting is not required. There are no environmental health objections. Although the premises has, had, has not had one up to now, a business hours condition is proposed. In conclusion, public concern is primarily focused on the proposed use as a funeral directors and not as a business use per se. This is not a reason for refusal. In comparison with many businesses which could occupy the premises right now, unfettered in any way, the proposal will be at the lowest end of the impact scale. This is not akin to the hostel or rehabilitation centre type of use claimed by objectors in their submissions. By their very nature, funeral directors are respectful and considerate. They set very high standards in undertaking their business and dealing with the public. Vehicles are deliberately quietened, and activities are conducted in a modest and punctilious manner. This is by no means an uncommon use within a residential area, and is of value and necessary to the benefit of the community. The proposal is modest and proportionate and has due regard to the neighbours and the neighbourhood, hence the reapplication. Those planning issues raised have been positively addressed and appropriate conditions applied. I trust you will therefore support this application again and grant approval accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr Evans, up is all the speakers now. Okay, as I said in my introduction, this is a, a resubmission of an application that was uh, withdrawn previously. That application was considered by this committee on the 20th of March 2013, and um, prior to actually issuing the decision notice in regard to that uh, decision that was made, an issue was raised regarding the uh, validity of the ownership certificates that had been served with that application. As a result, prior to the issuing of the formal decision, that application was withdrawn. This resubmission, we have double checked in regard to the certification and it is correct at this time. The uh, scheme is essentially the same as before um, and it has addressed two additional areas, um, the conditions that were, were proposed to be imposed by the committee, one relating to the hours of use of visiting members of the public and the other one requiring a canopy. The application this time includes the element of the canopy as part of the application and there's additional drawings that demonstrate that a vehicle can stand in the area proposed. So looking at the building itself, what we have is, as I said earlier, a detached red brick bank building. Um, you can see that it's got an area of uh, hard standing to the, to the front, which is, uh, there's no boundary to that area, it's just a, an area of, uh, of hard standing. It is clear that the, the surrounding area has got a number of residential properties. So you can see properties across the road. As you look up the road, you can see a series of residential properties in that locality. So no one is saying that this is not a residential area. The property is also in close 
proximity to a, to a neighbouring property, so that is a view of one of the neighbouring properties, and that is opposite the uh, original position of the, um, of the proposed uh, service door to the rear of the site. And as you can see, there is a narrow area to the rear, um, which is the area where vehicles would stand in order to be uh, unloaded. Just looking at those, the proximity there, Unfortunately, a bit uh, bleached out on the side, but this is one of the neighbouring properties, so you can see that the, this is the building here. That's another residential property, so you can see again that the juxtaposition of the neighbours and this property are quite close. So in plan form, what that means is that you have the, the white area in the middle there, which is the building, and these are the neighbouring residential properties. There is a proposal to have um, a, a vehicle access here, gated, with a screen fence around the side, and this green area here is a, a green canopy roof to try to present, prevent views into these doors, which are in this location here, to, uh, to stop people overlooking into that area from neighbouring properties. This is an area of, of parking at the front, accessed um, from Cartmel Road. Five spaces there, a disabled, additional disabled space there, and like I say, the, the hearse or any um, amb private ambulance um, coming to the property would, uh, would park here and unload in that direction there. I think um, I wasn't at the last committee that considered this application, but one of the issues raised, I understand, was the, uh, whether you could get, actually get a vehicle into that area. This is a typical vehicle of the type that's used. As you can see, there is sufficient space to actually get that in there and open the doors. And again, that's in plan form, showing that where the vehicle would stand behind these gates, under the canopy, and unloaded to the rear. <laughs> visibility to the front, has been mentioned of the, the highway authority, adequate visibility down the main access, uh, main access road there. And the scheme, unlike the current situation, comes with landscaping um, of these areas to the front and a, a delineation of these areas with uh, low boundary walls. So it introduces a planting, some, uh, some tree planting in there as well to soften that, uh, that general area. Fence detail is pretty much a standard um, weatherboarded um, uh, fence detail to sit above the existing wall. And the canopy is an open frame structure with a, um, a, a, a green roof system, so a, a, a sort of a sedum roof type system, and that would have a shallow fall, it's three degrees coming away from the building. There is a condition on the um, order paper which refers to obscure glazing to the windows indicated green. These are the areas in here, coming across here on this frontage. The idea being there that they, they, they will be obscure glazed up to the average height, uh, eye level, so that you wouldn't be able to stand and look in, into those areas. In internal layouts, um, just to show how this, the, the building would work, at ground floor, this is the door into the rear to the preparation room. You've got um, an arranging room here, reception towards the front and chapels along this side. These are the windows along this side here, which would have the obscure glazing. As you can see, that is actually a corridor area. There's no actual um, um, arrangement to, uh, to see into those chapel areas along that side there. Finally, a more detailed drawing, which is probably more difficult to get on this viewer. But that shows how the existing wall sits at the moment, the screen block. That's the, 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 the heightened area to the rear with the heightened fence, taking out to the eight feet that was referred to earlier. The shallow sloping glass, grass roof behind. And as you go along and get away from that canopy area, the, the height of the fence would step down.
So as I said, the, 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 there's a conditions which were requested by committee to be added to the recommendation last time round relating to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the canopy. The detail of the canopy is shown and an hours of condition, so that, uh, an hours of use condition. That is repeated on the agenda paper. That condition is intended to um, address uh, visiting members of the public rather than uh, activity per se at the site. The impact of the canopy and the fence uh, are the main changes um, since the original proposal. Um, so they've been addressed uh, and it's considered that the impact on the neighbouring properties because of the juxtaposition will be acceptable um, and that, that those uh, facilities would provide adequate screening of the area that was addressed previously at committee. Can I draw members' attention to the late observation schedule which um, uh, revised condition 6 that actually um, has made clear when the landscaping uh, um, needs to be implemented. The previous condition related to um, the, the building works. We feel that um, to make it clearer, um, that now relates to the actual commencement of the change of use. I also would like to propose um, that an additional condition um, is added, and that would actually be to require the canopy and screen fencing to be implemented prior to the use first commencing. So that's not included on the late observation sheet, but it's something I feel that is um, required to make sure that the, uh, the canopy that we deem is necessary is actually, is actually provided. In conclusion, there's been no significant changes to the actual use of the scheme since the previous decision was made by this committee, and therefore your officer recommendation remains one of approval. Um, with that, Chairman, if there are any further questions, then um, I'll pass it back to you. Just stress the hours of um, business, please. The hours of business are as set out on page 19 of the agenda paper, condition 8. The use hereby permitted shall not be open to visiting members of the public outside of the following times, 0800 to 1800 hours Monday to Friday, and 0800 hours to 1300 hours on Saturdays, nor any times on Sundays, bank holidays or public holidays. And can you just uh, reinforce um, recommendation number nine, the canopy and screen fencing, please, again? That would be a condition requiring the canopy and screen fencing to be, uh, to be provided prior to the use first commencing. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm one of the three ward councillors for the Fairhaven.